So starting off, the FK1 Plus is going to be coming in at 60 US dollars. Pretty reasonable. So hopefully this mouse will verify to all of us that you do not need to break the bank to have a quality gaming experience. This ambidextrous mouse weighs in at 95 grams without the 6.6 .6 foot cable and measures in at 5 inches long, 2.6 inches wide, and 1.5 inches thick, which actually is almost the exact same size as the FK1, which I did a review on in my last video. Make sure to go check that out if you haven't already. But to me, for some reason, it feels a tad bit longer than the FK1. Although it does still feature a low profile, this quite possibly could have something to do with the one millimeter differences in width and height and the obvious weight increase as well. It's also listed as the extra large version in the FK series, but after having used this mouse for over three days straight, if you have medium to large size hands, it should work out just fine for you. In my opinion, the FK1 Plus really latches on to people who like their mice with a little bit more weight on it. I personally am not a fan because I feel like I have less control when gaming, so I probably wouldn't recommend this to gamers who prefer lightweight mice like myself, but it all comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. Aesthetically, the FK1 Plus has a very simplistic, clean look with a smooth matte design, but grippy enough to stick to your hands if you tend to TTV sweat a lot. They used a thin, flexible plastic for the cable, so if you don't have a mouse bungee, you should be fine. Now, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but just like any other mouse from Zali, the FK1 Plus is plug and play, so for all my low IQers out there, this basically means that no drivers or firmware downloads are needed. All you have to do to get your mouse up and running is plug it in and start playing. I personally am not really a fan of this though. I like to be able to mess with my mouse settings and a well put together user interface, but the FK1 Plus doesn't feature any RGB lighting, so software really isn't that necessary. Moving on to the specifications, Zowie decided to equip this mouse with an Avago 3310 optical sensor, which is just about the exact same as the 3310 from Pixar. Since Avago recently entered a licensing deal with them, so all Avago sensors are now being manufactured and distributed by Pixar. Speaking of software and sensors, the FK1 Plus does have a built in DPI adjustment button located on the bottom of the mouse with speeds ranging from 400 DPI being red, 800 being purple, 1600 being blue, and lastly, 3200 DPI being green. This mouse also features an adjustable polling rate ranging from 125, 500, and 1000 hertz, which can be changed by pressing and holding the indicated mouse side button shown in your user manual that matches the polling rate to your desire while plugging the mouse into your computer. So to demonstrate, for 1000 Hz you would press and hold mouse button 4 while plugging the mouse into your computer, for 500 Hz mouse button 5, and for 125 Hz you would press and hold mouse button 4 and 5 at the same time while plugging the mouse into your PC. Like I said in the last video on the FK1, something about this mouse still doesn't feel completely right. Not too sure if it's a problem involved with tracking, a smaller amount of mouse acceleration, or even the sensor, but it seems like the mouse slows down the further you move it along your desk. Don't get me wrong though, the mouse feet are very smooth and this really isn't a massive problem, and like I said, it could just be me, but I just thought it would be smart for me to inform you guys about this because I might not be the only one experiencing this problem. As I mentioned earlier, this is an ambidextrous mouse, so it comes equipped with four mouse side buttons rather than two, so for all the left-handers out there, this quite possibly could be the mouse of your choice. Zowie provided us with Huano switches, which have a very deep hard click on both the side and main buttons, as well as the scroll wheel, which has a subtle, slow controllable scroll. The side buttons do seem a little small for an extra large mouse, but to me when it comes to side buttons, size doesn't matter. One, because we don't discriminate on this channel, and two, I'm goaded on the stick, so you'll never see me fat finger and misclick a day in your life. For grips, I like to stick with the traditional palm and alternate to a half claw mid game, but I'll put a hand gesture guide on the screen for you guys as well as the click test right now.
This mouse was primarily made to be used in FPS gaming, but for all the Fortnite lovers out there, the FK1 Plus performed very well in third person games too. I didn't run across any problems when using it. Overall, the FK1 Plus is a pretty comfortable, well put together mouse at a great price point that performed well in both FPS and third person games, but personally, I don't think this mouse is the best fit for me. I'm not a fan of heavy nor extra large mice, but if that's something you look for in gaming peripherals, then I would definitely recommend the FK1 Plus to you. With that being said, I think that's going to have to wrap it up for today's video. Once again, big shout out to Zali. Without them, this video would not be possible. And I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to go ahead and purchase this mouse. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, make sure to smash like and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Zali review videos like this one. We still have six more mice to cover, so I'm very excited for those. I hope you guys are too. And don't forget to leave me a comment letting me know how you like the FK1 Plus if you are a current owner or what your favorite mouse is so far. Once again, thanks for watching. Ciao.